Oh, well, I'm sure you can see me now. And I was wondering if you're going to cater or you're coming to me first, but it's okay. It's <laughs> just making the point. Well, we're changing matters now to something uh, also of equal importance, uh, if not, you know, if not a very worrisome dimension, this dimension of corruption. And in recent days, we have seen uh, movement against those within uh, the government of President Buhari, one from the uh, the head of service, um, Mrs. Winifred Oyoita, yeah, some of the dailies were reporting that this morning. We also have that on the news as well, uh, that she's been quizzed by the EFCC over a three billion naira scandal. Um, and uh, from what we also gather, I think about 600 million naira was found um, in one of the accounts of her aides, and that money was not explained. And as such, the EFCC has obtained an injunction to block that account. Uh, we also see that has been in the news for a while, a movement against uh, Mr. Okoye Bono Obla, who is being accused of certificate forgery. Now, would we say that the fight against corruption is beginning to gain new bite in the face of all that we are seeing uh, within the circles of government uh, this morning to join us and discuss this matter? Mr. Victor Giwa is here as a national coordinator advocate for people's rights. He's also a legal practitioner. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Yeah, good morning, and thank you for having me. Good morning. Well, you can see, I mean, I don't know. I, I had to say that I was a little heartbroken this morning. I was hoping the story wasn't true uh, about Mrs. Oyuita. But, you know, some people will say it's still at the level of allegation, and anybody can be quizzed over anything, um, and you're innocent until you're proven guilty. guilty. Yeah. But from all the stories that we're seeing... Um, Koyo Bono Obla, who was heading the president's um, is it asset recovery uh, yeah. team, and yeah. now we're seeing that of the head of service. Uh, it's a very important position. What are your thoughts as a lawyer? Well, the case of uh, the head of service was shocking. I I saw it in the in the papers yesterday night, and I really don't want to believe that a civil servant of that caliber we have such a humongous amount of money within our custody in terms of alleged, allegedly to be in our custody and uh, I, over one billion naira in the face of abject poverty, over 18 million Nigerians are living below one dollar per day with this, I just, it's, it's actually unthinkable and it's really, <laughs> It epitomizes the challenges we are talking about in Nigeria, that one person can be, can, can be in control of such volume of amount of money mm -hmm. and is a civil servant. Sincerely, I, 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 it's, it's, it's not only going to be embarrassing, it's painful. Well, I don't think that the words billion mean anything to Nigerians anymore. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the way we see it being mentioned in conjunction with corruption cases. Uh, however, I am heartbroken for a different set of reasons. Just the fact that, you know, you don't have too many women in government in high places. And then you see this kind of story about a woman who, you know, who, who by all means looks, you know, very um, respectable, so to speak. Yeah. But... As I said, you remain innocent yes, until, until you're proven guilty, guilty, and anybody can be interrogated. But are you, do you think now that there's been strong criticism against the fight against corruption, corruption being, as being waged by this government? They have said it's selective. They have said um, it's not as comprehensive. They have said it's not, it's not being fought with uh, some amount of tact or some intellect. But we're now beginning to see that even those within the circles of government are being affected by this. Um, d does it give you hope that, or are you, does this reawaken hope that indeed the fight against corruption is not just being mouthed, uh, it's something that the government really means to execute, no matter how you're highly placed or no matter how connected you are to them? Yes, yeah, sincerely, when, when, when I got the information, when we in Advocate of People's Rights and Justice got the information, we were a bit pleased because we, uh, those are the issues we're talking about that, yes, the government that has made issue of corruption to be in front burner is even looking at the persons inside this government. But it's a welcome development. That is what we, we are looking at. That's what we are expecting. That's what we, we are want to hold the government to be accountable to, to be able to bring to justice 
those persons who are pilfering our collective resources. And uh, that is commendable. That is commendable. I mean, but we would also like to see that not just those in public service, but those within the cabinet of the president, those who have been alleged publicly that the government can say, oh, there's this allegation against you, if not for anything, but can you just step aside and let us have this kind of investigation that is going right now on the head of service. Which cabinet is that precisely? We're is talking it about the, the kitchen the cabinet of the president. The, is it the cabinet that had served before or the cabinet that is about to be inaugurated? The one that I've served before, the one, the, the various persons that are within the circle of, I am aware that the government, the president has appointed the chief of staff and other kitchen cabinets, if there are allegations. The point is that the fight against corruption should be predictable. That is what we are looking at. It, it, it has to be holistic. When you pick up somebody, when you, there's an allegation against a particular person, just like we are, they, they are doing right now for, for in, in that of the head of service, they should extend it in the same style, manner, with what they would do to anybody in government, within the government cycle. That is exactly what we are campaigning for. And that is the only way the people can buy this action of the government that, yes, indeed, the campaign against corruption is, 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 is sincere, they are determined, and that of a truth, Nigerians can buy into it. But until we see that direction, you know, we see that fight against corruption moving in that direction, there will be this issue of, oh, it is selective. So it is a welcome development for that of the head of service, but the government needs to show that, yes, we are not being selective. Now, we, we saw the case of uh, uh, Chief Obla. You know, he has been suspended based on the, um, the report, the interim report submitted by the independent uh, ICPC, Independent Corrupt Practice and Unregulated Commission. And again, I, 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 we see it as a good development. I want to really personally to say yes, the government has shown some, you know, some level of uh, direction. I mean, because the issue of his certificate has been in front burner. The, I am aware that the House of Representatives came with a report that there's an issue with his certificate. It, but, it, was, it, it was a speech then. I mean, he said that they were targeting him and that, you know, the, that they had, there was no grounds for the, uh, for, for the accusations which they brought against him. But now it would seem that upon further investigation by the ICPC, there seems to be some um, corroboration by that agency of government and that, some, that all could all might not be well with the certificates presented at the certificates with which he went to the University of Joss with. Now, some people are saying, um, could this be t targeting people? Uh, because let's not forget that before now, the, um, the head of service, she had had some, um, it would seem, some uh, back and forth with the president's chief of staff. That was something that was documented on camera. Uh, some people might make insinuations that perhaps this is a backlash from that uh, back and forth they had over who reappointed, um, trying to remember the name of this man now. Abdulgabak Mania. Mania, Mania. Yes, yes. Uh, who, who gave him his letter, who took, let him back into office and all that. I know that there was some back and forth between um, you know, the head, head of, of service, service and the chief of staff. And the, the chief president. of staff. The current chief of staff to the president. Yes. And then, you know, um, to be doing a, a job like asset recovery is not exactly one that a lot of Nigerians will, will, will smile at, especially if you're taking back uh, what you think they ought not to have in the first instance. People will, will look for fault. So, do you think that these two people were targeted? Yes, I, 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 I um, have the tendency to start looking at that, and I will give you the reason. The chairman of the Special Investigation on Asset Recovery, which is Chief Obla, in recent times, have been investigating high-profile cases and high-profile high -profile persons. If you recall, he was the one that arrested Senator uh, Uzodima, and the basis of, his, of the arrest was, was he was investigating a $12 million contract awarded by MPA to Uzonima for the dredging of the Calabar Channel. And according to their report, 
he was awarded that contract and the job was not done. And that was even when Opus Oduma was going to contest as governor on the platform of APC in the 2019 election. It was the same panel that investigated uh, Am Amoju Pinik of the Nigerian Football Federation that was talking about the $19,000 that was collected by three persons of the Nigerian Football Federation for their conference in uh, Egypt, in the uh, Confederation of Africa Football Conference. It is this same panel that is investigating right now the Petroleum Equalization Fund in which certain persons, certain top officials in that agency was, were linked with you know, having properties worth millions of dollars, millions of naira, especially in Imo State. It is this same panel that investigated and was trying to charge the then Deputy um, Senate President, Ike Ikuyamadu. It is that same panel that investigated Stella, you know, Stella, Senator Stella. So, Odua. Stella Odua. So the point you're making is that... Is that so there is standards. And right now, mm -hmm. the same panel is probing the, the one Tumbai's brother, Ibrahim and, and, uh, Ibrahim and Turaki, that, that run an oil company. And according to the panel, about $100 million that is supposed to have been paid to the federal government have not been paid. So it is in the middle of this investigation by this panel that we started getting some of these issues. So I have the belief that somehow the panel might have stepped on certain persons who believe that they might be untouchable. So I mean, that is the basis of my suspicion. And so whether, you know, the report from them is that, oh, ICPC, you know, is, came with an internal report. I don't know how ICPC will come with an internal report that concerns certificate forgery, which <laughs> WIAC is there. Any simple letter from any government agency will establish whether or not the certificate of OBLA is genuine. Yeah, but some people will say, I mean, shouldn't, in this kind of matters, shouldn't anyone be like uh, Caesar's wife above board? Um, in, in everything you should have, you should not be found wanting in any situation. So for instance, uh, from what we can even read about the certificate which he presented to attend the University of Joss, uh, we're seeing that the certificate he presented was a separate name. We understand that WAEC has already said they have no uh, records of anybody sitting for their exams by that, by that name uh, that was even presented. So it's not clear when he changed his name from the name that he presented to the University of Joss and the name that he currently answers. These are issues that have been raised. Uh, and even to the ordinary eye, even if you were going to say yes, he's being targeted, there are questions to answer. What, where, what, what happened before he was appointed? Was there no screening? Was there no background check? I'm aware that it's a system, it's a tradition that before you are appointed to such sensitive position, one of the things I know they do is that they send your name to the DSS to do what they call the screening. So was it that? Should we that? not begin to question this screening that is done by the DSS? I mean, shouldn't we question just how thorough the screening is? Because we have seen people uh, who were screened, who were screened, screened <laughs> and you know, we're beginning to see issues with certificates after they have already been presented um, you know, uh, they, they've been screened by the Senate as well, and they've been appointed or they've been inaugurated into those positions. And then all of a sudden, these scandals break out. Yes, and I can tell you why. Because being in political positions is political patronage. It is not based on merit. People are appointed not because of your merit, not because you deserve it. It's because of the role you have played politically. It's for political compensation. So when you'll be nominated by your party or by leaders of your party, and you are thrown to such agency. What they will just need to do is to just do a ceremonial screening. But I'm aware and I'm, I'm very sure that agency like the DSS will have enough information about uh, Obla. They will have the real information, but they, will not come, they might not come up to say what his status is because he's seen as what ordinarily they call a party, a loyal party man. Mm. So, so that, is, that has been the challenge with the system. So what are your final thoughts on these investigations? Would you say, um, 
uh, what would you say be done? Uh, or what should we be hearing about them subsequently? Yeah, in terms of investigation on the on, uh, on the head of service, like the FCC have started their work, and uh, we we want to see that uh, they come up with uh, not it shouldn't be political. They come up with enough evidence to be able to charge her if if they have enough evidence, and um, you know let her defend herself. Secondly, I also think that um, the ICPC, you know. Are we, according to the president, in their defense, in their reason for suspending, should um, in the first place shouldn't be talking about issues of uh, what they said misconduct of the body and the issue of forgery and all of that. I don't think that is not within the purview of ICPC. That a police can normally can ordinarily take such issues and touch, touch it. And ICPC should come with its final report. Mm -hmm. So that this suspension will not be a political move just to you know, be to him out of that well, office. We do know that the president has asked them to speed up uh, the investigations into this. So we'll see how those matters eventually pan out. We have to thank you for coming on Sunrise City this morning. Victor Giwa is a national coordinator, advocate for people's rights, and also a legal practitioner. Sunrise City continues in a moment. Please stay with us.